What's good, PBO people? It's me, the analyst Elkazams, back for a pre-week uh, four uh, power rankings. Uh, we've got three games in the bag now. I am here this time with the Charleston Chestnuts. What's up? And we are going to start off the power rankings with um, the 14th place team, which ends up being the Norwalk Neuverns. No team change, no game played. So we're kind of just, you know, sticking where they were last week. Uh, they forfeit lost to the Worcester Whoopers. So they fall to 0-3. Pretty bad differential. Uh, team still doesn't have a second uh, Terra Captain outside of the Avalog. So, you know, just not a great position to be in. There's not much to say other than that. You got anything to say, uh, Charleston? Uh, not really. The game wasn't played. There's not a whole lot to talk about. All right. And with that... We will move on to the team at number 13 that did have a game played. The Pittsburgh Scizors, uh, patented 4-0 loss to Mug and the Sunnyside Suicunes. And, um, you know, this is where they were last week. It's another loss, so I didn't see any reason to really move them. Really just, uh, again, more so than play, although I didn't think the play was, like, out of this world or anything but i didn't think it was terrible either i think it's a really like concerning team issue that you just can't do enough damage uh he couldn't break through mug's fat at all mug just sat around whether it's with ting Lu, whether it's with scream tab whether it's with especially vileplume who had toxic and just ward like a toxic the torn at toxic i think the the mud stale at toxic the do defense no taunts anywhere against mug is uh unfortunate um, Vioplume just kind of had free reign. The Gouging Fire got toxic. Uh, I thought maybe he was going somewhere when he clicked Nasty Plot with Torn, but it, it just, um, led to nothing because the damage just wasn't enough. You know, didn't really go for any fly flying move, opted to go for Heat Wave, and the damage output just wasn't significant enough, and all the health back that Mug was getting through all her Pokemon, it, well, he just whittled down from Toxic and, you know, Nightshade, like, like, Mug is playing so passively and you're not taking advantage at all, and she kind of just stonewalls you in your face staring at you, and, uh, there was really nothing he could do just because his team is so, like, physically weak. Even the Terra, uh, Aqua guy, because it was Raging Bull, because it, you know, scared for screens because it's Mug, uh, it didn't even do half to scream tail. so uh, another case of, like, where the damage output just wasn't significant enough. Uh, I think that's kind of the tell-all for this team. Not enough uh, pivoting, a lot of Pokemon getting stuck out on the field, and not enough damage. I think that really is uh, the the main point. Uh, what do you think, Charleston? Um, I think, I, I agree with what you said, but I think it's also kind of uh, working in the opposite direction as well. This team absolutely lacks a lot of that immediate firepower to break through um, some of those bulkier, faster, or some, some of those bulkier teams. But it's also lacking a lot of the defense to uh, to like be able to withstand some some of those bulkier attacks like from Mug's team, um, and it still struggles against some hard hitters as well. Which sounds kind of crazy when there's a, a tornado theory in Deoxys defense, but we really saw it in practice. Um, it doesn't have the because the team is kind of like floor just, but it doesn't have the sustainability is the issue. You know what I mean? Right. Like, like, it, 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 than, it doesn't. Than it, it doesn't it, have counterplay to a lot of those yeah. uh, like defensive play styles. Like, sure, they're fat; they can eat, it, they can recover HP, but they're not doing anything to make progress when they're doing that. Yeah. Um, so, like, like the as we saw the Deoxys defense, it got toxic, and it just kind of set up for a little bit, not actually doing anything, and it just kind of died to toxic. Uh, Tornado steering is in a kind of similar spot. I think what this team is going to start having to do in future weeks is probably start getting creative with some of the bulkier mons on this team, is maybe start running setup on it. Uh, I think Calm Mind Floor just is like, like a criminally underrated set on it. Uh, so like that could be good in a lot of matchups. Yeah. I think Deoxys Defense, you can spam Nightshade so often in, into teams. You, you just have to be looking for every opportunity to squeeze out some offensive advantage with this team. And right now, I just feel like Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh hasn't been doing that to, to this team's fullest capability. Yeah, you got to really um, be careful when you send out your Gouging Fire with this team too. Because Gouging Fire is so often like the sole win con. Because there's not a lot of win cons on this team. Unless you're like set up Paldea Tauros, which again, I don't think is like the greatest Pokemon ever. Uh, you need to be like gouging went down early in this game. I think gouging has been going down early semi consistently. You need you need to 
be careful with your gouging because it's really it's really important on this team in my opinion to have some sort of win con like that like i said try running taunt when you're going up against really fat teams uh you have two really good taunters in tornadus and uh deoxys um it's just I, I do think you need some team changes. I, I do think you need some like fun like drop PZ maybe, maybe figure out something with it with your terror captains to get a better one potentially. I I, I think some team changes are for sure in order. I, I would agree with that because um, right now uh, the gouging fire is spread way too thin. Um, like basically, if, if gouging fire is dying early in a game, it means you're trying to get it in to make progress, and that means you're not using it as your end game closer, your win con. Um, so that just means that you need more offense to support that gouging fire, and that's kind of the big issue we're seeing so far. I agree with dropping PZ, or even if you don't drop it, uh, you can make it a Terra Captain. It's a surprisingly decent Terra Captain, it's, even with the adaptability me the uh, mechanic. Here, just like don't run stab Terra. Of, of the Pokemon here that you can allow to Terra Captain, it's the best Terra Captain here. So 100%. I would, I would recommend uh, doing that. Or that, maybe or, uh, Yeah, Forges is a decent Terra Captain. captain. Yeah, Fortis is a decent Terra Captain too, <laughs> but like I don't think Muck needs Terra, and I think you could drop Spirit Tomb. So um, I agree. Uh, I I would look at rearranging your Terra Captains for sure, especially if you're going to keep the Porygon Z. Uh, with that, I think you know it's kind of been the same story every week. Like I think we talked about it with Tyranitars as well. It just feels like a whole lot of turns where he's getting very little progress, and then at the end. He just he just can't do anything against the uh, overwhelming offense of the opponent. Or I mean I mean in this game it wasn't even overwhelming offense. It's just he couldn't do anything the whole game until the very end. The other two games it was he couldn't do anything until the very end where the opponent got their really offensive uh, Pokemon in Kiram or Terrapagos, and the game was just over. So kind of kind of just the same tale every week. Uh, can't really do anything at the beginning, and then at the end everything just kind of falls apart because the integrity of the team and the you know sustainability isn't there. And uh, with that, we'll move on to the team at number 12. All right, the Moochin Embors doesn't move uh, after getting 6 0'd uh, pretty, pretty badly by Mary uh, and the Luscious Low Ponies. Uh, got absolutely thrashed by Eladios. I am. People keep saying Latios is bad in Gen 9. I have never been of that opinion. I think Latios is really, really good. I've always said that. I like specs, but uh, I think Calm Mind is good too. Uh, I saw it last season with um, the Golden State Durants. They got top three on the kill board at Stargazer with uh, Calm Mind uh, Latios. And it's looking like we're heading that way this season as well with the way this Latios is going. Uh, just really. No way, no way of dealing with it, especially after Malamar took a, took a good amount of HP at the very beginning from Killer Watrell. Uh, and Latios could kind of just sit in. Iron Bundle wasn't doing enough damage to it after it got the two Calm Minds up. And it unfortunately led to a situation where they really had no way of uh, killing it until they whittled it down after sacking off a few Pokemon. But at that point, it was too little too late. Uh, a well uh well timed you know coming in of the treads and the game was kind of just uh over uh what do you think charleston um yeah i, I would agree with most of that um latios uh i think i am still i'm one of the, the people people that thinks uh latios kind of sucks nowadays at least without terra i think it kind of needs terra to be super good but um it did prove in this game that it's not entirely like reliant on it right um so basically what happened is i think part of it was maybe a uh slightly a prep thing maybe just kurth just didn't give latios the respect it deserved yeah in the builder kurth's like um, wacky prep stuff isn't working so far this season i think the team also yeah it, it worked great things. last season but like i feel like if you're going against uh some like some kind of setup mon that can bowl through you like you did you either need to bring something like roar on suicune or uh maybe like like an av meloetta or something or like a calm mind meloetta try and offset the setup and try and 1v1 it that way but uh i don't know if either of those guys came to the game even um i know meloetta didn't i think i could be wrong let me check uh, but either way those sets yeah, no. should have definitely come and should have come in right away when the ladio starts setting up um so I, th I think right uh it's not so much a team issue for this team as it is a prep issue right now because kurth kurth is very <laughs> famous for his wacky prep and last season worked out very very well for him 
it's he just preps a learning for, curve with this team. He right preps now, for very specific scenarios, and if the scenario doesn't happen, it kind of just all crumbles. He preps for like a very specific situation that's going to happen in his head. I think. Um, yeah. I, I I I don't know. It's I, I think the team is a little whack, but uh, the the prep, you know, it it could work in theory. Um, and I I do think Latios at least. Everything I've seen, especially in PBO, Latios seems very good. Um, I, I think Latios is a, a very threatening Pokemon. You can't just ignore it in Builder anymore. Uh, it's kind of crazy to do that. Uh, I'm going to have to say, you know, I don't think anything's going to change. And I don't know if Kurth really cares how low he is. So w w with that, I think we're going to move on to the uh, the next game. Okay, the Crown Point Titans have fallen to 0-3, so they end up here at the uh, the 11th spot, I believe this is, correct? And um, I believe they got beat by Orange through a setup Zarude, and it's kind of an indictment on the passivity of the team, in my opinion, when... Uh, you're kind of running all these fat Pokemon, you know, you got their Slow King, you got your Mandibuzz, you got, uh, I don't think Registeel came, I have to check the replay real quick, I don't remember. No, it didn't. But, you, yeah, you, you have all these fat Pokemon, like a Lomomola, for example, Mandibuzz, Slow King, and it becomes really, really, um, dangerous when you're running so many fat Pokemon if you come into the face of setup of some kind, because then you can get broken through really, really easily. So, like, for example, the Mandibuzz was coming out a, lot, out a lot in this game. And I do really like Mandibuzz. I think it's a good Pokemon. But it can sometimes be a do-nothing Pokemon if you let it out too often on too many things and kind of, like, sap your momentum a little bit and you don't click U-turn enough. And instead, you're staying in with it forever. Um, I think maybe, like, that could be a bit problematic for him. Uh... I think, you know, he, he, he just was, like, just kind of sitting around for a bit. You know, Mandibuzz killed Empoleon. That was good. The taunt set to make it so it couldn't roost. I liked that idea. Um, Slowking. You know, he, the beginning of the game kind of uh, was in his favor a little bit. Slowking got the kill on Valiant, but it sacked a lot of its HP. And then it got sacked off against Dio Speed. And then after that, the game kind of just became really, really difficult. And once Zarud got in, and the answer to Zarud was a Loma Mola, I mean, it, it just doesn't make much sense. Uh, his only plan was to burn it, because, I mean, he said it in chat, he doesn't know what jungle healing does. So, um, he just completely forgets about that move altogether. But even without knowing what jungle healing is, your plan to beat, like, what if it was a, a sub Zarud? Your plan to beat Zarud is just to burn it. That's the only plan you have for it. Other than that, you just plan to lose to it. I don't really love that uh, in concept at all. So, like, even though he gets the burn, uh, Orange is completely fine with it because he knows uh, about jungle healing and, you know, Terra poisons so that the hands can't deal with it and the, and the game's kind of just over. All momentum he had, gone. Uh, you know, it, it just feels kind of bad, in my opinion. Uh to have a game that's going kind of decent for you, just completely go down the drain just because you don't know one move. And also because your team, you know, the fatness of your team kind of leads to situations where uh, setup can potentially be very disastrous. Uh, what do you think, Charleston? Um, yeah, I would agree with that. I think, um, I think team's passivity can be really, it, it can be okay, it can, it can be manageable as long as you have some of the offensive pieces that are capable of picking up some of that slack. And I think this team right now, given that it's like kind of, uh, it, 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 it's like a, a trick room team, but also combined with uh, snow. And so what that's doing is basically none of your offensive pieces are particularly fast. They're, like, they're not coming in for free, uh, which means like in this game, the only two offensive pieces that came from, uh, <clears throat> that came from uh, Satitans were Satitan for one and Iron Hands. Which I want to say, great nickname on the Iron Hands. Hail off to, great. Anyways, um, point being, against a team that's like as always threatening as oranges, the offensive pieces just never had a 
a point that they never had a point of entry even with your slow pivots from glow king and mandibuzz it just wasn't really able to make any progress um i, I think the bramble gas might have also been offensive but i think bramble shit is just not a good pokemon and doesn't like it, it doesn't get entry it's too frail for any of that so like it's just another it's another one of those guys that just wasn't getting any entry yeah um, bramble just bramble wasn't able in the back a lot because it has a hard time yeah. getting in unless it's yeah, uh, unless yeah. you're predicting like a ground move or like uh, a, a fighting move, like you have to make a prediction to get Bramble Gas. Yeah, uh, really see. Or you get a, a slow pivot from like something. Like I yeah. guess if a, if a ground type comes in on Glow King, is it Chili's? You can go to Bramble Gas or something. But I feel like in that scenario, you just rather go to Titan anyways, right? So I just yeah, if, I feel like Bramble Gas is always just such a a, a weird mon. Yeah, because if you catch one turn wrong with Bramble Gas, it will die instantly. One hit yeah. mode. It's really frail. And then it's way frailer than in this game, was. in this game, all it did was sit in the back until the last turn where it got outsped and killed. So yeah. I don't know. I like I feel like the, the offense is kind of tricky on this team right now because like theoretically it has some of the most oppressive offensive mons around, right? Um so like, like iron think... hands is is the goat one for one guy ursaluna can get as many kills yeah. as it, as many kills as trick room turns are available dnc's one of the best terror captains ever so I... titan's also one of the best terror captains even though it doesn't say it's like captain it, on the, yeah uh... it doesn't say it's a captain here it is one and i'm almost positive it is one so yeah I am too. It, it definitely tarried in the game so yeah uh, let's it, hope it, it, is, it, it, it is a terror captain um i think primal um... guys isn't and so titan is I think that's what the issue is. That would make sense. DNC and Titan, that math adds up. Yeah. Um, um, I will say... Um, he traded it. He used his last Terra trade to, from Titan to Bramblegast for this upcoming whoa. week. Whoa. Titan Norwalk. to Bramblegast? Yeah. So, what? Yeah. in my okay. opinion, that's a terrible move. So Titan, in my opinion, is probably like yeah, the best mid-tier I don't Terra that. captain we have available. I, um, I, I don't get that at all. So Titan was one of his main win cons. Mm-hmm. And now I, 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 I don't, don't I don't I don't understand. I, I that think that's, all. A, that's a downgrade, but honestly, that's probably something for the next PR. Um, yeah, we will talk about that this later. week. Um, yeah, er, for Ursa Luna, also, I'm almost positive if I remember correctly, Orange doesn't have a ghost. Why did Ursa Luna not? Yeah, um, I agree. Uh, I, I was helping Orange do some minor prep uh, the day of the match. And he was super scared of the Ursa Luna. He's like, oh, what if it's bulletproof AV? I, I, it gets three kills. Oh, if it's got Cyrus three mods. I, like, I, yeah. think, I, I think if like, you were literally standard Trick Room Guts and you just spammed Facade, he would have had a really hard time. I mean, do you? I um, and if and you want to have probably some... probably got to it KO'd, because that, that did not look like Fizz Def and Pulling. They took 29. Yeah, the, the, the foul play was doing a boatload of damage. Um, so it would have just two it KO'd the entire team. Belly will probably lose I, one barely. Garchomp might if it's Fizz Def, but I don't think it was. It was like some weird utility set with a jack pack. Yeah, so I, I don't fully understand why uh, Orange's team is really fast. I don't know why Trick Room wasn't tried at all. Uh, yeah, reverse no, no, no DNT, a... no Ursulina. I feel like it was just a uh, misunderstanding. Yeah, it was just a really yeah. It was it was a really fat like basically do nothing team of six guys, and then you know. It was kind of working at the beginning just because Orange was letting his guys die. But I think Orange was letting his guys die just so he could get Zarud in. You know what I mean? And then Zarud comes yeah. in and the game's kind of just over. Um, also, you, you talked about it before. You, you said the, the game plan was to burn the Zarud. It's not like it was burning with Will-O-Wisp or something. It was it was a Scald burn. Yeah, you're banking the whole game on a 30% Scald burn with so many other things that could go wrong. And then guess what? It did go wrong. It had jungle healing. So... I don't know. It was just, uh, I feel like there were some things were not given their proper respect in the builder, both on your team, set, set like, team like the guys. And on yeah. Team. Yeah. I think Sarud wasn't given his respect. I think Ursa Luna was heavily disrespected this game. Um, I agree. Yeah. And with that, we'll move on to the team at number 10, I believe. All right. A bit of a fall off for the Lion City Leech Life here. Um, they did, I saw, they changed their Vikavolt from Rock to Electric, which I really like. You know, he keeps commenting how we keep commenting on it, but we don't have to comment on it anymore because it happened. Uh, kind of just out-prepped and outplayed this week by the Nevada Caterpies in, you know, uh, every way you, you, you can be, I would say. 
Uh, he goes. He gets the sticky webs up, but loses his Terra and his Vicavolt in the process. So now he has a two cannon that's not Terra, just sitting there. And the two cannon, you know, it gets some chip, but it really doesn't do anything. And he brings like Swampert out consistently on like uh, Volcanion, but the issue is, um, Hubbard doesn't really. If he gets burned, especially Swampert doesn't really be Volcanion, um, and. You know, Rillaboom is also a pretty free switch, so there's like this constant switching between two cannon and Rillaboom and Volcanion, but it just doesn't really um like benefit uh leech life in any way, and I think he probably should have seen that sooner, that the turns weren't really going in his favor. Especially because he was like using um like he's brought two cannon every week, right? I don't I know so. if two cannons a good enough Pokemon to bring every week, man. Like, I'm sorry. It's it's not bad. I think it has to do something to do with your sur survivability. You don't like that you don't have a lot of Pokemon that can click, like, a healing move. So you want something that can, like, kind of come in to take hits and heal them off. So you've figured that that's two cannon. Um, I, I just don't know, man. I, I feel like two cannon can't come out. Like, are you gonna bring it next week and the week after that and the week after that too? It it it, it doesn't do a ton, very much damage at all. It's it's like clicking U-turn and roost. It, it, it's uh, you know, it's taking the hits okay. They always do like forty five percent, but he's not really doing anything back. You know what I mean? It kind of just they kind of become do nothing turns. He's trying to gain momentum with U-turn. And, like, it, it's not bad. I, I, I hesitate to ever say it's bad, but it's not really good either, in my opinion. Um, so, like, and then eventually, you know, he went for webs, but a whole bunch of things had the freaking heavy-duty boots, including Darkrai, so it didn't really matter. He telegraphed that his Golden Go was Scarf, for sure. Uh, and, you know, Volcanion was just being a menace this game. It kept coming in and uh, doing massive damage. Caterpies had a really nice uh, Sylveon set that had multiple fairy moves. I think, you know, in the modern uh, meta offensive, like, multi-attacking move, Sylveon is really good compared to, uh, like, the defensive only Hyper Voice set. So uh, I like the Caterpies brought that. Another really good bring from them. Um, you know, it's just, like, beat by Darkrai. Uh, Golden Go couldn't really do anything. And then he got a kill at the end. Because of, a, I'm assuming, a roll with Quick Attack and, like, the Gardevoir had the right move. But and Clear Body on the Dragapult, too. These webs ended up doing absolutely nothing. Uh, Rillaboom and Volcanion just kind of kept switching in and, you know, breaking down the, the opponent's team. And then Darkrai got in, and he didn't have, like, a, a fantastic answer for it uh, in the end of the game. Uh, I do like the Throat Chop idea. Like, I get what it was for. It's just, you know, Caterpie's out-prepped you a little bit there. Um... Just an overall game where Caterpie's kind of outplayed you, outprepped you. It, it, it was just an unfortunate situation. What do you think, Charleston? Um, part of it is like I think this is another example of a team that just kind of outprepped itself. Um, <clears throat> like basically, I think the big issue in this game was your Mons, uh, like uh, what is it? The the Leech Life's teams, the Mons on the team were just weaker. Than the ones on Caterpie's team. Yeah, no uh, Blood Moon. Like, like you don't have. Blood yeah, no Blood Moon. Moon no, no. Water. Your best Mon is Golden Go, and after that, it's Hydreigon. Meanwhile, and instead you're bringing like not, Dragon, not they have Darkrai, Rillaboom, Hanian, Terra, Hitmonlee. It's like you, you're just, you're just getting outgunned. And point. you're and you're bringing non-Terra two cannon. Like I just, you know, it doesn't do enough in my opinion. It doesn't threaten enough. It doesn't. Yeah. Uh, like I, I, I feel I, like. Uh, the, the the quality of the mons on the builder this week were just not up to not up to snuff for what New York or for, for what uh, the Caterpies had just in general. Like everything on Caterpie's team had the potential to be really strong and game winning, whereas on uh, Leech Life's team it's like there's Golden Go if you bring the right set I guess there's Hydreigon I yeah. guess I guess Scarf Gardevoir it's just like. There was no Blood Moon switching on this team. Like, let's Caterpie's, be very clear. Caterpie's like, also I, predicted. I, Caterpie's also ahead. predicted the turn you were going to flip turn and got rewarded heavily because they burned you. So that was like just a good prediction from them on that turn. Yeah. Um. Let me just check the Sylveon calc real quick. Um. Yeah. Blood Moon. 
kind of does a lot of damage to that thing. Even if, even if it's max but F calm, it does 47 to 55 of Silk Scarf. Um, very, very strange decision, in my opinion, to not bring it. I guess it's hard to actually click and move with it because everything kind of just outspeeds it and does damage to it. Um, so I, I guess there's that angle. Uh, surely you could you could have beaten stuff like Rillaboom somehow with Water Pond. Um, I don't know. I just feel like uh, I just feel like you just didn't bring the right mons this week. Like I, I feel like that we've been saying that a lot. This uh, for these bottom teams here, but, but I, I feel like it's just true. Uh, you just need to be bringing yeah. right mons that have the the best matchups, and instead we're bringing non Terra two cannon, and yeah, it's, it's I just mean... not doing a whole lot. Yeah, I mean, it, again, like, in terms of prep, obviously you lose your Vicavolt instantly just to get webs up, and I think zero Pokemon got affected by webs. So you're already down 5-6, and then one of your 5 is a 2 cannon. It's just, from that position, really difficult to win. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's really difficult from that. You're, you're down so much in just re pure resources there that there's there's not much you can do. Obviously, you couldn't know his uh, Dark Ride was going to be Boots, but uh, Caterpie's came prepared for the webs. You know, uh, when you see Vicavolt, you got to come prepared, and Caterpies did. So, you know, that's huge props to Caterpies. Just an unfortunate turn of events for you, for sure. Um, yeah. I, I would agree with that. I think we'll move on to the team at number nine. This is going to be a big drop. We got the Vancouver Valiants, who got absolutely 6 0 smashed by a Dedun Spice. Um,. So here's the deal with the Vancouver Valiants. They're two and one, but they're minus three, and both of their wins have been through a crit, you know, some luck, a few flinches, uh, a few items on the Moochin on Moochin side. It, it's very interesting circumstances that have brought them to two and one. And this week, I think it's hard to say they played bad because they only really played four turns of actual pokemon like two or three turns i will say once you see terra psychic and once you see agility you should assume weakness policy i know that's hard it, 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 but it, that because that's the metagross set man that's what they do they run the weakness policy to bait knockoffs to 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 get the boost and then to go for stored spout power spam i think it was telegraphed enough that you could try and work around it. You had the Encore Wigglytuff for a reason, right? Because in Mox, the Dunsparce was it wasn't the weakness policy set, but it, like it ran Calm Mind, it ran Glare sometimes in Mox, and the Wigglytuff had Encore specifically for like set up to Dunsparce. And I feel like after Rox went up and he saw the agility, maybe he should have instantly gone Wigglytuff instead of going for knockoff. That's really the only gripe you can have because he did just get swept, but it is still like a legitimate gripe, you know what I mean? So, uh, that's kind of what I have to say. It's just, he was hanging on to like a higher-ish spot just because his team is good and he was winning, but his wins were by, you know, a good amount of luck and he did get like baby beat really, really badly this week. So I think he had to drop off a bit until he can bounce back and show again why the team is so good. What What do you think, Charleston? Um, I think what this really revealed this week about Vancouver's team <clears throat> is that it is very psychic weak. Your steel type is a rev of room. It A, does not resist psychic moves, and B, is not that bulky to begin with. Your dark type is Gren. That's not stopping any stored power sweeper, as we just saw from Vancouver's game. Um, and so basically, like, in, in, in Paldex, in, in 2024... Stored power is the reason why a good dark type is necessary on your roster, um, is to stop those stored power sweepers for the most part, and to be a ghost dancer. Um, but it's like it's both of those things. Greninja did not fill that role in the slide. It's it's, it's not a ghost resist. It's not a, a stored power stopper. And so really, I think it it shows a lot of really good foresight from Vancouver's opponent this week. Uh, was it Sawdust Chimps? Yeah. Um, it shows, it shows a lot of really good foresight to notice that and immediately go to uh, a pretty unorthodox stored power sweeper and try and get off that sweep right away. Uh, I imagine it wasn't supposed to sweep right away uh, because like it led 
So it's probably just supposed to trade and do, do a little bit and then just kind of um, let the rest of the team clean up. But Vancouver's team is just so wholly unprepared for psychic moves that it just immediately crumpled. Yeah, I agree. I, I, I think there might be some unforeseen team construction issues here in terms of psychic types. Um, maybe, I mean, I'll look at this with him, obviously, because uh, we kind of build together and stuff. We could, because we haven't brought Galarian Weezing yet. It's a little bit superfluous. You know, we have a poison, we have a fairy. Maybe we could get a better answer in that tier to psychic types from instead of having Galarian Weezing there. We'll have to look into that. Maybe. But for now... Like, if, if something like Incineroar is open, that could be really good in a slot like this, uh, because it can pivot around to get things like Gren in more easily, things like Revive Room in more easily, by clicking Parting Shot or U-Turn, depending on the matchup, I guess. Um, it, it really lets you get in a lot of these frailer threats that exist on this team a lot, lot easier. So I think maybe like, like a slower pivot in the Glaring Weezing slot could do wonders for this team. Yeah. So I think we'll uh, we'll leave it there. There's not much to talk about in the game itself. It didn't last very long. I think the video went out today and it was three minutes long. So yeah, uh, we'll move on to the team at number eight. The Worcester Whoopers, they're up to two and one. They got a forfeit win. Not much to talk about. I still think the team's decent. Not crazy good, not crazy bad either. I think the Enamorous could be Terra, but the Terra Magnezone he seems to really like and it's done pretty okay so far. I like the, the top three Mons a lot. I think Skarmory's pretty okay. I think even without Terra, you know, Therian's kind of slept on, and I think Mian Chao's a good Pokemon. Uh, but, you know, it's a win, but just a forfeit win. Anything to say on it, Charleston? Um, yeah, I pretty much agree with you. Uh, I think I think the Terra Captains are the biggest issue with this team. Or, like, probably Terra Captains plus the low-tier options. Uh, I yeah, think Enamorous... <clears throat> yeah, I think, I think Enamorous is a really really big missed opportunity i think it's a really massive sleeper terror captain in this format um but net realistically is never coming to a game neither is ice Q, especially since ice Q isn't terra if ice Q were terra maybe it would come to a game but since it isn't i would say just drop it drop bayonet maybe move your terra off mesprit see if you can find some lower tier guys if you can get an amorous terra and then i think an amorous is 120 points um and then Magnezone, I think, is 70. So if you wanted to have Magnezone and Enamorous, you could. Like, that. that's that's legal. Um, and then you could roll with that. Or, um, in my opinion, I don't know if, if the points line up with this, but if you could do Araquanid and Enamorous, that might even be better. Yeah, um, I don't know if that works. Uh, I have to check. It, it probably doesn't. Um, but if it does, hey, that, that'd be great. Um... Skarmory's a really good Pokemon. Donpan's a great Pokemon. They work well together. Uh, I think pairing Roaring Moon with Iron Moth is a really uh, good decision. Because Roaring Moon really appreciates uh, Amon that's able to destroy fairy types. And Iron Moth is like the quintessential fairy defeater. Um, I'm a big fan of Iron Moth. I think it's underrated in draft. I think it's very good. I'm slowly coming around at it. I thought it was kind of an overrated Mon at first, and now I'm realizing it fits on a lot more builds than you'd expect it to. It has a really nice speed tier that a lot that is very difficult to get on a lot of teams, which is around the 110 mark. There's not a lot of Pokemon anymore that uh, are like between the 120 and the 100. You're looking for like I that think, 110. I think you're on crack. I 110 is such a bloated speed tier, in my opinion. I have a hard time um, finding have... them. I have a hard time finding them. Uh, I think 110 is a speed tier that's relatively easy to fit on a team, especially because a lot of the mods are, like, good. Uh, like, Espeon, Moth, all the Ogre Pond forms. Um, did I say Gengar? I don't no. remember. Uh, Gengar's 110. Like, there are a lot of threats around that. Mar L like, in Rock Dusk is another one. They're just... Uh, and the Lotties. They're, they're just, like, a ton that can fit on most teams. I like Lotties. All those other Pokemon I don't like. <laughs> You don't um, like Lycan Dusk? I don't like. I, I think we've had this talk about this, so we don't have to talk about it. Right I, I think Lycan Rock <laughs> yeah, Dusk yeah, yeah. is pretty bad, uh, um, or I think it's pretty. Anyways. If it's not Terra, I think it's pretty bad. Um, we could go to number uh, seven. Think, yeah. Abbotsford Agrons, uh, a one in two team up here. I think this is the highest one in two team. Uh, pretty, is not washed. 
But yeah, showing us he's not washed, getting a win over the team we had ranked number two uh, last week. Uh, just pretty strong play overall. You know, played good. The opponent uh, really underestimated the power and the moveset of Samurai Hisui a lot, in my opinion. Uh, didn't really uh, remember that they had all that priority on them and that they did so much damage. So it led to the death of, you know, Mew and uh, Tinkaton right away, which opened up the uh, floor for other Pokemon to just do uh, absolutely devastating stuff. The Lumberry uh, for the Will-O-Wisp from the Rotom, a uh, good bring on the Sneasler for sure. Uh, the Rock Slide on the... Uh, Sneasler to potentially flinch. I thought that was a cool idea, because if he got the flinch, he probably just won right there. Um, uh, the Pheasantipity had a Rowat Berry. I thought that was a pretty cool idea. Uh, the Arboliva with Screens, another uh, strong bring, in my opinion. Um, you know, just overall, pretty, pretty, pretty good play, pretty good prep. Uh, opened up the game early and kind of just uh, everything I think went how he wanted it to go that game. What do you think, Charleston? I agree. I think uh, a big part of this win being as convincing as it was, was his opponent not playing uh, as great as they normally do. I think leading Mew in front of one of the stronger dark types uh, in the format right now and then just clicking Dragon Dance in front of it is a crazy call. It's like, it yeah, lived on I, 2%, I think, I think. I think that was literally, like, the idea was it was supposed to be Mew versus Samurai Hisui, and the idea was to do that and get the Witness Policy proc. The only issue was he forgot about uh, Sucker but, Lunge. He, he, he forgot that was yeah. something that Samurai got. Yeah, I, I just think, I think that's crazy. because like He, he said that in the chat, I think. Double pry out all the time. Yeah, he, he said that in the chat. He forgot this priority Samurai got. So, so I think he built with the idea that he would take a Ceaseless Edge from the Samurai, and then he thought he was going to sweep with, uh... Maybe. But it was also I Sash think Samurai. The Tink I, think, I think sacking the Tink Dun afterwards, too, was also weird. Um, yeah, you could just go Meow. At, at, yeah, you, you go Meow, and you, you click... You can click U-Turn if you're afraid of Sash, or just click Flower Trick if you're, uh, like, fine with that. But instead, like, sacking the Tinkaton, which is, like, one of your only... I guess I don't really know exactly what it... It, it stops Pheasantipity from doing anything, right? And then Pheasantipity ended up being important in the, in the mid-game. Yeah. Heatwave is bouncing off. It, like, yeah. Pheasantipity has, like, 75 special attack, and Tinkaton's a fat fuck. Um, if it was AV Tinkaton, then I get why he just sacked it to the Sucker Punch. Otherwise, if, it's, if it wasn't AV, I don't know... Uh, he should have just clicked rocks in front of it because you would have outsped. And if he clicks sucker, then it's whatever. Like uh, because th th then you'll, you'll get a turn afterwards. But uh, if he doesn't sucker, you get you get the rocks off anyways because you're faster. And it just it would have been a much better scenario. So I don't know. I feel like metal was just not making the kind of plays he makes. Um, but Abbotsford, his his prep was very good. Um, Psychic on the Spectre was was really good as a as a great neutral move into the Tropagos. Um, draining kiss was getting all the recovery it needed um i talked to him a bit like after the game and he said uh, he didn't get to use it but he was terra fire espion which like if you yeah. look at metal's team really does a crazy number on it like it just espion just clicks calm mind and just beats everything yeah i mean i did mocks with Abbotsford for this game and yeah terra fire espion was very very good in this uh in this game um for yeah sure. uh sneezler put in overtime uh I, the rock slide i think it was mostly just a d knight tech um, I, I don't think he, he, he didn't end up clicking it against D-Knight. It was just against the, uh, Terrapagos. Yeah, it was, he clicked it on Terrapagos, although, I, actually, if I you was know, I think the CC damage, I think, I think CC could have killed, yeah, through the yeah. thing, which would have been funny. But, um, I, he, he was going for the flinch, for sure, because he won if he yeah. got the flinch. Like, right there with Sneasler. But, uh, yeah. he still won in the end anyways. Um, good, good prep, you know. We didn't really good get to prep, see what play. Meant. Yeah, we didn't really get to see what Metal had into you know, these guys just because he was on the back foot so hard from the very beginning that he was kind of just, like, panic clicking. It seemed like, you know, kind of a standard um, Meowskarada, I assume a standard-ish Rotom. Um, yeah, I don't know. Standard-ish Tarop. D Knight had Iron Head. Yep, yeah, with that, we'll move on to the team at number six. 
Jumping way up, we have the Nevada County Caterpies. I was very impressed with their play, their prep this week. I thought they played uh, really, really well. I thought that, you know, the Heavy Duty Boots Dark Rye was a really nice spring. You got the clear body Dragapult, so that's not getting affected either. Rillaboom has the Grassy Glide, so, like, do you even really care about the webs? And then uh, I think Volcanion was Boots too, if I'm remembering correctly. So, like, nothing cared about the webs, so you were already instantly off to a really, really good start. You are constantly putting on pressure with Volcanion and Rillaboom. It's particularly Volcanion. He was really struggling to find answers, you know, especially after he got burned. Got the play right on the flip turn. The Sylveon was more offensive than defensive wish, which is really nice. It stopped uh, the Hydreigon from potentially being able to set up and win. Uh, so that prep was really, really good. Uh, the, the the team was just threatening overall. And, like, Dragapult did come in at the end, but it really didn't even need to. Uh it could have been like just four Pokemon that uh, won this end game. I I, I think um, you know it it was a really really uh, strong showing from Caterpies in terms of prep, in terms of you know predictions and play, but also not even necessarily needing to predict, just being able to in the flow state of the game have full control. This is like what one of those uh, games where it, it feels like you know who has control the whole time. You can kind of just tell, and. Um, I, I was very impressed this week, so I had to bump him up a, a, a good a good amount. What do you think, Charleston? Um, I think this team right here is a very clear indicator of why the, the drafting strategy of have a good, solid seven to eight top guys and then have a couple of shitters at the bottom effective strategy this generation. Uh, when when Nevada County pulled up to the game against uh, against Lion City, Lion City Leech Life this game, it was clear that the, the team they brought was just more powerful it was stronger it was better defensively it was just better than than his opponents and <clears throat> i think when you when you have as good a team as that it kind of makes your prep that much easier you don't have to be as creative and you can just kind of uh let your let, let your place for itself and that's kind of what was happening in this game there wasn't a lot of flashy stuff there was like boot star cry um there was there was the the flip turn play but overall, it was really just leveraging the advantage that, that the team had naturally, and I think being able to do that is uh, it's really it's really good when you know when and how to to leverage your matchup. If that makes sense. Yeah, I think his play and prep has improved already dramatically from week one, where he kind of just got stonewalled by a vile plume. I think uh, if they played again, that wouldn't happen again. Um, I think he would at least come prepared to bring some wall breaking against, you know, such a fat team. But overall, I'm I'm very impressed. Uh, I think he's using offensive Sylveon really well. I think Volcanion, you know, he used it in Sunset last season effectively. He's using it effectively again here. I think Volcanion is kind of like his, his not necessarily mascot Pokemon, but that's like, that's his guy at this point. Like, he, he, yeah. he, Volcanion's his guy. It's his right? flagship man, yeah. Yeah, and I, I think he's <clears throat> using it very well. Um, I, I and uh, Darkrai was pretty good this match too. You know, Sub was also really cool on the Darkrai, uh, yeah. letting him uh, kill the Scarf Golden Go uh, freely because uh, we knew it was Scarf, so we would have had to switch out. But he just subs, and it, it uh, really just gets to pick off uh, some damage. I, I like it. Yeah. Really, really nice game. Yeah. Uh, Darkrai beating the fraud allegations. And yep. I think if there were one thing I would change about this team, I think the Terra Captains are slightly underwhelming compared to the others in, in the division. Yeah, there's not um, a super high level Terra <clears throat> Captain, but I still think yeah, like, Volcanion could. Yeah, Himalayan is definitely good, but I feel like Volcanion might be better, or even Sandy Shocks could potentially had, be better. Yeah, but the price just Volcanion, don't line up, I think. Yeah, he had Volcanion. <clears throat> The, the issue with it is I think Himalayan needs Terra to be good. Like without it, I would probably not have Maybe. it. Yeah. And I think Volcanion can only be one Terra type. And with one Terra type, I think Volcanion isn't... Like, I think it needs two. I think it needs one of its stabs and then, like, Fairy. Maybe something. what you do, then, is you try... <clears throat> you drop your Ablog and Murkrow. I don't know how many points they are combined. But you drop your Ablog and Murkrow. Upgrade your Hitmonlee to Hawlucha, if you can. And then get, like, a low-tier guy, if or a low-tier guy or two, and see if that works out. I don't know if it works out any better. Um, yeah. But Holucha, I, I think, I mean, I, serve as a much stronger Terra Captain than him on me. I, I, as, much, like as much as I love him on me. 
before the season started, this team was ranked very highly. I think this team's actually pretty good as is. So I think we just need to see a few more weeks. He does have a very tough schedule. That's fair. Looking at it, uh, that is a very unfortunate well, that, schedule. That is, that is a tough schedule. That is a very unfortunate schedule you've got there, my friend. Uh, three of the next four weeks are like the top three players in the history of PBO. So that's tough. Um, we'll, we'll try not to hold it against you. Yeah, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Uh, I think you can win. So uh, just go out there sure. and prove it. And we'll go to the team at number five. A bit of a drop for the Tennessee Tyranitars after mm-hmm. losing to the Abbotsford Agrons. Uh, I don't know how much they prepped for this match. It kind of felt like a little bit last minute. He kind of forgot a few of the things that, like, a Pokemon, especially Samurott, does. Uh, a lot of the sets seemed like kind of, like it was just combined Earth Power, uh, Terrapagos. Kind of on the back foot from the beginning, losing two Pokemon immediately. Uh, got out prepped for sure, you know. Just had Wisp on the wa- wash as an answer to Sneasler, but Sneasler just had the Lum. So he got ca- caught there, I want to say. Um, just not, not, not the most, uh, stellar performance from the Tyranitars for sure. I don't necessarily know if this was the best six to bring. I feel like Thunderous could have been okay that game because his ground is Quagsire and obviously Thunderous gets Grass Knot. Uh, I feel like Okie Dogi also was kind of decent this game. I don't really think it was like bad in any sense of the imagination, especially if you tear a dark, uh, or fairy, you can kind of like take some hits and like, uh, do some damage back, uh. Pretty, pretty freely, I want to say. And uh, the bulk up set wasn't bad at all until, like, Arboliva. Because, like, if Arboliva strength saps you, that's, like, fine. And eventually you'll poison Arboliva. Because the Arboliva wasn't the Terra Captain this week. It was Espeon. Um, I don't know. I just feel like it was just, like, a, a bad week from the Tennessee Terra Notars. I don't know if there's anything to really, like, gleam from it player-wise. I think we just got to wait to see him bounce back because I'm guessing this prep wasn't a uh, super in depth, super planned out. Uh, and then obviously like the play, like we said, going Tinkaton, uh, I, I feel like it was kind of just sacking Tinkaton for no real reason. So like sacking two Pokemon at the beginning, there's really nothing you can do to come back. It's kind of, it's kind of impressive, honestly, that he got it down to a three O off of that, but that's kind of an indicator of just how like when you have, Dragonite and Terrapigus, uh, who can both like take one hit guaranteed, you can always kind of climb some differ- differential back. Uh, what do you think, Charleston? Um, yeah, the big thing I think about this game is the combination of prep and the lines that Metal decided to go with here are uh, just kind of a step down from the, the quality of the plays and prep you had in the previous games. Uh, we talked about it a little bit, little bit before. The Mew lead just seems very ill-advised to me, especially since it's, since it's not Terra Mew. Staying in in front of the, the Samurott is just crazy, in my opinion. Um, I think not going now afterwards is arguably even like an, an even worse play. Uh, the Tinkaton sack is just really it's hard to hard to get around the the Lum. On Sneasler, like clicking Willow Wisp on that, I don't disagree with that play. It was it's it's hard to reliably read a play like that, so I'm not gonna hold that against him. I think Ironhead was a cool bring on the D Knight. It uh, it hit a lot of the team neutrally. It let it get through Fez, um, without being affected by terrain from Arba. Um, I feel like maybe Terrapagos was a little bit too standard this matchup. Maybe it could have been leveraged a bit more. Um, because I imagine it had to have Dark Pulse to hit Spectre, right? Which means it would have been Dark Pulse, Calm Mind, Earth Power, Star Storm. And I feel like maybe, like, when you're facing down a Fez, you kind of have to have some prep in there for the Toxic, right? So maybe if you could have fit, fit Sub in there somewhere, uh, to also maybe take advantage of the Spectre, that could have been cool. So, I, I guess, like, th- those are the, the things that I would maybe look back on differently in prep uh, like if i'm metal I'm, I'm looking back at what i could have done differently i probably look at some, some things like that um, but overall i don't think this spells disaster for a season i think it was one not great game but with a, with a team like this with Terrapagos, that's uh 11 and one right now in stargazer but the kill leader in the division uh and then guys like d knight meow Sparata, i think this can absolutely bounce back fairly easily yeah for sure i'm 
pretty sure Metal will bounce back, so we just got to see it. And we will move on to the team at number four. The Luscious Law Ponies. Uh, I really thought about putting them higher and kind of skipping over some of the 3-0 and teams. I was thinking about even putting them in number two, maybe. But uh, I decided against it because uh, she does have that one loss, although it was a loss to luck. But, like, th this is... Um, a really really nice showing from uh luscious uh from mary just uh dominating with latios uh using the calm mindset so effectively uh embors really had no counterplay it seemed like he really didn't know what to do and latios could just spam recover on everything and then start spamming psy shock or aura sphere the two coverage moves of choice and uh he lost every pokemon except landorus and then lopunny's made the call that he wouldn't click Earthquake, went Trez to preserve the 6-0, and successfully Ice Spindered it to death. So, a, a really, really nice uh, game from the uh, from the low ponies here. From a uh, team construction standpoint, from a plan standpoint, uh, just overall very dominant. Uh, not much to say, because the game was so short and so straightforward. What what do you think, Charleston? Um. Yeah, I, I agree with pretty much everything here. I think... Maybe if there's something that uh, could be said, I think maybe she wasn't leveraging certain pieces hard enough. I mean, okay, it, it's hard to say that when a lot of got five kills, right? But uh, Glastrier, in my opinion, didn't even come to the game. And while it didn't, it didn't change the outcome at all, I think it's worth noting that it had, in my opinion, a really, really great matchup with, like, Terra Ghost. Because, um, like, after a curse, nothing is actually doing any kind of damage to it on Kurth's team. And so at that point, it could have gotten, like, if Latios didn't do the job, then um, Glastier absolutely would have. But it didn't even come to the game, so I just, I don't know. I feel like that that's a missed opportunity. Um, but that's really kind of it. The rest has been, like, really stellar so far. Um, the loss to Vancouver was was really unfortunate, because it was to a lot of RNG. It was to, to crits, Hydro's hitting, uh, T-Wave, like, uh, Paralysis. It was just a lot of stuff like that. So it's it's hard to really hold a loss like that against her, even though I think her play was a little bit off that game. But this week her play was her play was really good. Um, I think uh, there was there was one point. Let me see if I can find it. Where the Latios, she let the Latios get dangerously low. I think it was on like two percent, and it clicked recover. Um, like after I mean, moving, like 13, 12, 12, 11 through fifteen, like one of those there, turns. Kind of just real quick, find it. Um, it was when it was burned. Okay, it was in front of the Landorus. She, yeah, she, she clicks, it was turn 18. She clicks recover in front of the Landorus, and then it clicks U turn and is 80%, leaving her on 5%. Uh, granted, the game was basically over at that point, so it wasn't as bad as I thought. Um, but still, I, risking it like that is kind of strange to me. Uh, especially when, like, you could have just kind of clicked a button and killed killed the thing. But, I don't know. Overall, she still played great. Um, she's absolutely uh, a, a championship contender. This is a really strong team. Uh, really strong cores together, too. Like, uh, uh, Treads Clefable is, like, a classic core. Uh, Latios is strong, even though I'm, I'm not the biggest fan. I recognize that it's strong. I think she has probably some of the the best Terra Captains in the format, even if they might be a little bit redundant to each other, both being like bolt beam coverage. Um, I think Blaziken is criminally underrated, and I think Ozzy was also uh, a very solid monster. Like overall, like her team is is very very solid just structurally, and her play has been backing it up for the most part. Yep. Yeah. So with that, we'll move on to the team at number three. We've got three three and O teams. We will start off with the Sunnyside Suicunes, who I believe um, keep the same spot they were at last week, which is the number three spot. Another 4-0 victory. Uh, it's the same story every week, essentially. Uh, she stonewalls the opponent, wears them down with Vileplume, wears them down with, like, a, whether it's Dusclops or Blastoise, some other fat Pokemon, gets off some recovery, and then, you know, sometimes Hoopa comes in to pick off some kills. Um, it's, you know, 
you know, I'm interested to see her face some of the other super high tier uh, opponents. I am interested to see this game against Valiance. I don't know how that will go. Uh, but still, I think this team, it, like we said, it's very mug. I think it's the best mug team we've ever seen in PBO. Um, she's playing it really well. She knows what she's doing. We, she knows what she wants to do every week. Uh, it's it's really just a, a dominating performance. This week, it was uh, Dustclops was doing a lot of work with its nightshades, with its pain split, being really good at chipping everything down. Hoopa put on a little bit of pressure, and obviously Vioplume with its toxics was going absolutely crazy this week. Uh, she has the number two and the number three on the kill leaderboard for a reason. Uh, those two are really kind of the, the story of the season so far, and a little bit of Dustclops. Uh, what do you think, Charleston? I think um, Vileplume and Hoopa are definitely carrying the team right now. And I, I don't mean that as to say the, the other members are slacking. It's just the other two are doing so stellar that it's hard for the others to keep up. Um, I think... I think if ever there was a team for Cobalion to fit on, it's this one, because Corviknight's the backup steel, or the, the, the primary steel, and they don't really share any weak... They, they share a fire weakness, but, like, you're not particularly weak to fire on this team anyways. Um, I think... If there's one thing I would say about Mug and her sets, is that uh, she tends to bring very traditionally unconventional sets... Right, like she brings screens Corviknight a lot. She's been bringing uh, a lot of double edged Cinderace. Uh, she brings offensive Ting Lu a lot, and like this, that's in draft. That's like the prime uh, place for those sets to be used. But after a certain point, when people start to know you, those sets become they, they expect those sets from you in particular. And so I think if Mug becomes too reliant on some of those sets. Uh, it's going to become a little bit exploitable. You're going to lose that surprise factor that comes from a lot of these sets. And sure, they might be good on their merits, but a lot of the times, uh, sets like that, you want them to be good on their merits and have the surprise factor. So if you're missing the surprise factors, it's going to make a big difference when, when you yeah. bring a lot of un unconventional sets. Yeah. Um, that's, been the, that's been the idea with Mug for a few seasons now. Um I think it caught up to her a little bit last season, especially because her team wasn't the best team she's ever had. But I do think this se season, this team is really amazing. And I, ha of the three people she's fought so far, none of them have found the answer for breaking through how sustainable and fat this team is. That's I think very it's on. A, I, think, I, think, I think. I think. I think this one is on another level of like walling, another level of just sitting there and like getting progress through like very little like chip and things like that yeah i i, I would agree i think um ting lu being paired with like scream tail is a very nice combination you get those fat wishes to get ting lu back up um corbin i think able to pivot around to get a lot of these guys in and keep getting chip is very nice i think a big thing for these for i don't want to say a big thing because like it's not the reason uh she won but i think something that helped for sure is that i don't think mug has played a lot of these people before um I know she's played Nevada County Caterpies, Caterpies, but it's not someone she plays often. Um, Norwalk and Pittsburgh, she's probably fought at some point in the past. But it's probably been a while, so all of these people are probably kind of uh, struggling to adapt to that that uh, trademark mug style. Um, yeah, they're bringing, but like, I think bring for, bowl, but they're just not. That's true. I mean, they're not bringing anything to break the fat at all. Yeah, and like it, that's a lot harder to, to do than it sounds, especially because I know mug is. A very big fan of like bulky Hoopa. Also, uh, like I, I think last week she, it had like 168 defense EVs, which like it, it is a great strategy for a mod like Hoopa, where like it doesn't need EVs in many places. So you just throw it into defense, and now all of a sudden it's living hits. It has no business living, and then getting three kills in return. Um, I think she's finding great ways to leverage mods that don't typically get a lot of usage, which is really nice. Like, like Dustclops has been, it came to two games now, I think, or yeah, just one? Yeah, it's two games, it's been to two, two games, games, and it, and it, it, really it did well in both one. of them. Yeah. Um, Vileplume is, like, the hard carry of the team so far, and again, I don't say that as in, like, uh, the other ones are, are terrible, but, like, Vileplume has been popping off. Um, yeah, I think this is, if there's a season for Mug to really pop off with her Mug teams, it's this one. And so far we're seeing that in, in action. Yep. All right. Shall we move on to the team at number two? 
a bit of a, so. a, a a pickup here, a bit of a jump for the Sawdust uh, Chimps. So this team is um, three and zero now, plus ten after a six zero dominating win over the Vancouver Valiants. Uh, this team is a little bit odd for sure, in my opinion, but. Seeing it in action three weeks in a row now, I think the pieces do click. I think Karam is doing a really good job. I think the Terra captains are actually like deceptively very, very good. As we've saw, they both, they, as we've seen, they've both gotten like a, a mini sweep or a full sweep so far this season. Um, you know, the guys who want to get kills, if you look at that kill leaderboard, are getting the kills, and the support mods are supporting them. I still think, you know, regular Tornadus isn't that good. But uh, Sawdust Chimps does bring, like, really nice prep against Abbotsford. Remember, like, the Tentacruel and stuff like that, and the Decidueye, all pretty good prep. And, you know, this week, the Dedun Sparse, I've been impre very impressed with their prep. It's, like, not unconventional, but still finding something really, like, it's... Not, like, unconventional and, like, crazy weird, but it's still, like, not the most common set, and it's still really good, and it's still a great line to find victory in a game. Uh, he's found uh, the line every time uh, so far. Uh, the Decidueye line, the Dunsparce line, the Kiram line in Week 1. Uh, that's all been really effective. Uh, as predicted, the Iron Boulder has done nothing so far, but, you know... Really effective uh, play out of the the four you know ones that you see there. The, the four Pokemon really stand out: Excadrill, Kyurem, Dedun Sparse, and Decidueye. Pokemon he seems comfortable with. Pokemon that are uh, doing really well so far this season for him. Um, and you know the, the the defensive mods like I thought Tentacruel did its job when it came. I think you know Slowking did its job when it came to that week one game. Um, I'm I'm liking the, his effective use of understanding the roles of his Pokemon, what he wants them to do, and then executing on the idea. What do you think, Charleston? I think uh, Sawdust Gems has had a lot of really great plays, a lot of really get great prep. Um, I think one thing I will point out is back in week two, uh, there were a lot of questionable, questionable plays as well. Um, I think... In that game against Abbotsford, they sacked Excadrill when it was it literally won the game, and instead they had to rely on Decidueye instead, which was a much sketchier endgame. Um, I feel like they haven't utilized Grimmsnarl quite to its full potential. Uh, again, like in the Abbotsford matchup, it was screens, but it didn't come out until like the last few turns of the game. Uh, I think non Terra Tornadus is kind of bait. I don't know, but the, the other the. The other Terra Captains on this team are very good. Uh, so it's kind of hard to really criticize that. I don't know. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm nitpicking at this point. Um, but really, this really is a, a phenomenal team. Everything's working together. The, the pieces are clicking. Um, it's kind of hard to analyze this week's game because it really was just a Dodon's yeah, Bar showcase. That's why I was kind of talking instant. about week two as well. Yeah, it's hard to talk about the Week 3 game at, at all. I just think, you know, he's found a way to effectively use his Terra Captains and, to, like, his top tiers. I will say you could shed, like... Uh, I, I still think this team could be made even better and with, like, a rework around, like, Tornadus and Boulder. The only issue is that kind of, like, messes up his speed tiers. But if you can find a way to get your speed tiers... Like, uh, your speed tiers... I think I mentioned that... I, this is going to be a weird one because you have Kiram. I think I mentioned it last time, but what if you had Weavile uh, over Boulder? Um, I, I just think Weavile straight up better than Boulder. I, uh, but I, I know you like the Tornadus, clearly, because you've drafted it in round four. Uh, it hasn't done much yet. It did kill the um, Arboliva in week two, so there's that. Uh and you've brought it every week, too. So clearly you like it. So th th there's something about it that you like that we don't fully get. But um, I, I, like, I, I do think there are a few Pokemon that haven't done much on this team. But the ones like the ones he wants to do something have really done something. Like they, They've done exactly what he wants them to do. And that's why I have them so high. And I think uh, with that, we can move on to our reigning number one. The number one uh, every single time we've done this so far, because he hasn't lost and all of his games haven't really been close. We've got the Frederick Klefkies with a dominant 4-0 victory over the Crown Point Titans. 
You know, the beginning of this game was a little shaky. He lost Empoleon to a Mandibuzz with Taunt. He lost Valiant to Slowking Galar. But the opponent let Slowking Galar go down. And I think the whole time, Klefkies was working towards uh, a Zarud endgame, recognizing that Zarud just won the game. He took advantage of the fact the opponent didn't really know what Jungle Healing did. And he really just uh, showed you why Zarud is one of the best Terra Captains we allowed. Setting up all over all the fat Pokemon that couldn't really do anything. And effectively getting to plus six, plus six, attack and defense. And there was absolutely nothing the opponent could do. And it was just so many kills in a row. And as we can see, Zarud has six kills now. I also thought, you know, I think Belly Bolt was uh, pretty good <clears throat> in the games it's come to as well. Uh, I think Valiant's been pretty good in the games it's come to. Uh, weekend Slow King in this Week 3 match. I, I, I think, you know, he's just really showcasing his Pokemon pretty well. Uh, shook his, his team pretty well. And uh, he came in with a plan this week with Zarud, and it worked uh, to perfection. What do you think, Charleston? I think overall, it was a really well-played game from Orange. I think if there were some pieces, he, he wasn't leveraging quite as well as they could have been. Maybe Valiant, um, which it, it's hard to really complain about because there was a whole Glow King on the other side. So that one's not as egregious. But in my opinion, I don't think the Empoleon really had to die. Because um, Belly Bolt, sh in theory, should have been a pretty free switch. Doesn't take much from foul play. Get your Electromorphosis. Ursaloon didn't come. So it's a free Volt switch to just chunk anything that wants to come in. And so, like, realistically, Belly Bolt would have been a great punish to, to the Mandibuzz, but instead you let yourself take 60% 60 from two foul plays. So I just feel like um, maybe it wasn't the greatest uh, of plans. Maybe we're trying to avoid a Toxic or a Knockoff, but um, I don't remember. The Mandibuzz didn't have those moves. It was foul play, taunt, U-turn, or roost. So it, the Belly Bolt really was just incredibly free and a free momentum to the rest of your team so i think orange if you can start leveraging belly bolt in situations just like that it'll make it even easier to get your guys like dio speed iron valiant or zarud in and you might have been able to even uh end the game a little bit faster um zarud though was played very well i think maybe i guess since you were since you were bulk up instead instead of sword stance uh alluring voice on allo would have mattered ever um so yeah, basically once this root got in, the game was pretty much over, and very it was very well played. I think if you keep playing games like that, keep prepping like that, not getting in your head, I know you like to do that, uh, you'll keep winning games. I think you won't have a problem at all making playoffs this season. You'll probably make it. I don't want to. I don't want to curse you because I think was it you never made it further than semi semis in PBO. Um, no, I don't want to curse never, you. He's but never won a game of playoffs. Oh, he, he's never won a game of playoffs. He's never won a playoff either. game, but he has made semis because he's been the first seed before. Gotcha. Okay. So, if and there this was is a the season... First seed used to get a bye in one of the seasons. Yeah. If there was a season for you to finally break that curse, Orange, it's this one. Yeah, I agree. I think this team is really, really strong. I think so far his play is really strong. I'm really excited for the game against Nevada County this week. All right. Uh... I think with that, we will end the power rankings. Anything to say at the end here, Charleston? Uh, yeah, we got a lot of really heavy-hitting games this week. Uh, I think you said earlier before we started the call, the recording, it was uh, the closest game was the forfeit game with a 3-0 yeah, no diff, and the rest were 4-0 no or higher. If you look at uh, the screen that Soren just pulled up, yep, everything everything was 4-0 no or higher, except for, oh, the Abbotsford game was also 3-0. So there's okay. That. So basically, we, we had a lot of a lot of blowouts, a lot of hard hitting games this week, um, yeah. which is it's exciting, but you also kind of want it to be a little bit closer sometimes, just for like uh, yeah, the, like for, for for playoff theor theoretically, right? Um, so I, I hope going forward we'll have um, a bit more of those closer games. We can have a lot of hype around the playoffs because I I know Stargazer is going to be a competitive division, especially when it comes around to week six, week seven. You know, we got a lot of cool games this week. We, I like uh, Clef Keys versus Nevada. I like uh, Vancouver versus Sunnyside. And like Low Punnies versus Chimps. I think all three of those games are going to be really cool. Yeah, For sure. a, lot of, a lot of things to look forward to this week. Yep. And with that, we will end the recording. Thanks.